because God is relocating you. God is relocating you today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is moving you from point A to point B. You're transitioning, all right? You're metamorphing, you're evolving. Come on, somebody. You're being relocated. And unfortunately, unless there's a push and a shove, most people are not going to grow. God, that God is relocating the United States of America. What does that mean? A location does not just have to be about a physical place, but a location has to do with a place first and foremost in the spirit. Someone say amen. In the spirit of God. Remember, everything is done first in the spirit, in the spiritual, rather than the natural, rather than the physical. And so I believe that the Holy Ghost is relocating your finances, is relocating your health, relocating your joy. All right, tell them to say amen. And listen, I want to go to some scripture today. It's going to help you and give us some hearts and likes here today. Listen, I want to go to some scripture. And I preached a bit on this, a bit of this yesterday at church during the resurrection Sunday service. And it was wonderful. We had a, we had a wedding ceremony. We had a water baptism. It was just incredible, phenomenal. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Amen. So listen, I want to go over to Luke chapter 24, verse 1. On the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, say tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. Ooh, spices. Does anybody like to cook? Ooh, spices. Come on, give me a good recipe, Jesus. Rabosha. Taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. Come on, someone say, they did not find the body. Come on, somebody say, I did not find my boyfriend. I did not find my girlfriend. I did not find the person I was looking for. I did not find the thing that I was looking for when I went to this place. I came to a certain church and I left disappointed. I came to a store and I left disappointed. I came to a place in my life and I left disappointed. Come on. The Mary, Mary, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, of James and John, excuse me. And the disciples came and they came to the tomb and they saw that it was empty. Someone say empty. Okay. They saw that the stone was rolled away. Mascaraba, and they were perplexed. Verse 4, they were perplexed. Come on. Someone say, perplexed. I'm telling you, you're in a season right now that God is about to perplex you. Listen, and there's, this, there's a difference. You can be perplexed by the world, or you can be perplexed by God. And the Bible says that, uh, be still and know that I am God. Or in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says that, uh, you know, be in awe of the Lord. Let your words be few and be in awe. And I believe that the terror of God, the fear of God, the awesomeness of the Holy Spirit is about to be revealed where people are going to be perplexed, dumbfounded. They're going to be confounded. Their minds are going to be blown away. They're going to be shocked, okay? They're going to be so blown away. They're going to be saying, wow, Jesus is great. Jesus is good. Jesus is God. They're not going to be able to debate with you. They're not going to be able to argue with you. Come on, you're going to... See every attack and every mind game being falling down now, 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 now. Rekedosha, bangarabosa, and and I believe people are going to be perplexed. They're going to have their minds blown. They're going to be amazed. If you receive that, someone say amen. So get ready to enter into a season of being surprised. Get ready uh, to enter into a season of being shocked. Okay, you know when somebody socks you in the gut or somebody slaps you in the face. I've had that happen to me way too many times. But when somebody does that to you, you're shocked. You're like, what the heck did that just happen? And that's what's going to happen in these days in Jesus' name to you, to your life. I'm not talking to your neighbor. I'm talking to you and your family, Jesus said. So someone say amen. They were perplexed. Someone say perplexed. They were perplexed because they saw two angels, two men standing by them in dazzling apparel. And they were frightened. Uh, and of course, the angel of the Lord said, why do you seek the living among the dead? If you receive him right now, someone say amen and give some hearts and likes. And verse six, the angel said, he is not here. He is not here. All right now, come on, Shekabo. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you how he was still, while he was in Galilee, that the son of man must be delivered. And they remember his words. All right, listen, I'm going to begin to preach here if I haven't yet preached. Here's the thing. They came to the tomb, but the tomb was empty. Someone say empty. Listen, you're coming to a place right now 
where you are about to be relocated. What the angels were saying is that Jesus' body is no longer here. The angels were saying that Jesus can no longer be found here. Stop looking for Jesus in all the wrong places. Stop looking for the Holy Ghost in the wrong places. Stop looking for an encounter in certain places, all right? Jesus is no longer in the tomb. You're looking at the wrong place. You're asking the wrong questions. You're looking for Jesus. You're looking for the wrong person. Why are you looking for Muhammad? Why are you looking for Buddha? Why are you looking for a Hindu Krishna God? You are looking for love in all the wrong places. Stop looking in the nightclub. Stop looking at the bars. Stop looking at the at the brothels at the circle. Come on, you're looking for G. You're looking for love in all the wrong places. Come on, you're not gonna find it in your boyfriend. You're not gonna find it in your Facebook. You're not gonna find it in your following the social media. You're not gonna find it in your finances. Why are you looking for love in all the wrong places? And the angel of the Lord begins to speak to Mary and says, "Listen." You're looking for Jesus at the tomb, but you know what? God has relocated the, the resurrected spirit of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, God is relocating you. If you receive it, someone say amen. Rabbo, God is relocating you today. There's a relocation that's taking place. Listen and hear me now. People are going to look for you, but they're not going to find you there because the old form of you has changed. You have already metamorphed. You have already evolved. You've already moved from being in the cocoon, all right, from, from, from being a caterpillar, from being in a cocoon, and now you're moving and you're evolving and you're metamorphing and transforming. Come on. You are going from glory to glory, and people are looking for you in all the wrong places, and unfortunately, way too many people continue to treat you like a child when you've actually graduated being a man and a woman of God. Unfortunately, too many people treat you like a pipsqueak, treat you like a chihuahua, when when they when uh, they're about to be shocked because you're about to push and shove. Come on, so many people treat you a certain way until they know that they cannot mess with you. All right, until they know that they cannot mess with you. What happened with the British colonial rule and what happened with America, with the USA? What happened there? All right, the uh, England was continuing to tax. Someone say tax. England was continuing to tax the 13 colonies of America, even though the Puritans, even though they left England because they wanted freedom of religion. Come on, our First Amendment right of the Constitution. Hello, somebody. Bang, 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 bam. Robo. So they left England for freedom of religion because there was such control and there was such manipulation and they cannot uh, worship God freely in the way that they desire to or in a revelation. So they left England. Come on, relocated. Someone say relocated. They left England and of course they, they went on a ship and they landed into uh, you know the East Coast and the 13 colonies began. But still, uh, the Queen of England, England continued to tax and have control and have their hand in the cookie jar, okay? They still had uh, influence into the 13 colonies. But what happened here? Enough is enough. Do, 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 do. Someone say, enough is enough. Come on, Robo. Enough is enough. No longer are you going to bully me. No longer are you going to try to bash me into a wall. Are you going to try to corner me? Come on. I don't want the, I don't want the worst pieces. Come on. I want the best. Stop giving me the leftovers. Come on. I don't want the cookie crumbs. I'm working so hard. I, 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 I'm working my tail off, but all I get is just 50%. All I get is just, come on. And the American Socialistic Communistic uh, Party and this Democratic leftist agenda is trying to take away all my money for a social... Ah, you follow me. So what happened? Push came to shove, and they began to fight. And guess what? America won. Come on now, somebody. We the people won, okay? We the people won. And what happened after that? There was a breaking of a soul time. And unfortunately, hear me now. Unfortunately, too many people treat you a certain way because you let them. Unfortunately, England continued to push and shove and bully Fear tactics, take advantage, come on, abuse their power, abuse their authority, abuse, come on, if God is giving you power, then stop abusing it. If God is giving you true leadership, then stop thwarting it. Come on, you got to stop playing around, one foot in, one foot out, and you got to begin to put it into action in a righteous way. And unfortunately, way too many people, their platforms are being taken out. Their ministries are being deteriorated. 
Their authority and their influence is being ridiculed and is being d diminished. You know why? It's because they're not properly stewarding. I don't know about you, but I want to steward the grace of God that's on my life. No matter what. I don't care about what, if whatever any person, anything said. I want to steward the grace of God that is mandated to me. It's mandated to me, not to you. If it's mandated to you, then I'm not going to argue with that. But as a man of God, I will help edify and correct and rebuke and bring things into alignment because we need to be in alignment with what God's saying, not with what the one world rule and religion is trying to say. But why am I saying this? Because you, too many people are trying to take advantage of the church. Too many people are trying to take advantage of scared kitty cat Christians are trying to take advantage, okay, until there was a push and a shove. I'm standing up for me. Get up, stand up, stand up for you, right? Until they stood up and something happened. I'm telling you, stop being bullied. Stop letting that Jezebel talk lies and spew curses and ridicule and say, come on, you got to deal with it. Come on, someone say, I'm dealing with it. Why, why am I saying this? I'm saying all of this. It's because God is relocating you. God is relocating you today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is moving you from point A to point B. You're transitioning. All right. You're metamorphing. You're evolving. Come on, somebody. You're being relocated. And unfortunately, unless there's a push and a shove, most people are not going to grow. Unless there's a challenge, most people are not going to be activated. Unless, unless there's persecution. That be, if it wasn't for persecution, the church would not have spread out from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth, fulfilling the great commission, commandment of Jesus Christ, Matthew 28. But there needed to be persecution. Come on, somebody. There needed to be some hate mail. There needed to be some hatred. There needed to be some angry faces and angry birds. There needed to be some extra tension to shake the womb of God, to shake the church, the upper room. Come on. What are you doing with the power? What are you doing with the Holy Ghost? What are you doing with the anointing? What are you doing? Bash, I got stop playing safe in the kiddie pool. Stop playing safe in the little leagues. I don't care if you're good in the little leagues. God bless you. But what about the major leagues? You want to keep staying small in the, in the kiddie pool? In the, come on now. But you're about to be relocated. You're about to be, you're about to come into maturity. You're about to come into fullness. Man, I wish somebody heard me today. It's all right, because Jesus hears me. <laughs> You're about to be relocated from the kiddie pool. Come on now, from the bench, from the sideline. You're about to... Mm, she got a bravo. You're about to be relocated. You're about to be repositioned. You're coming into a new place. You're coming into a new sphere, a new realm. Come on, somebody. You're coming into a new atmosphere. A new setting. You're coming to a new place that you never even dreamed of. Wow. I'm telling you right now. The Holy Spirit is relocating you. The Holy Ghost is relocating you. Why am I sharing this? They came to the tomb. And the form of Jesus was no longer there. They were used to a form of religion. They were used to a form of Christianity. They were used to a form of Jesus. But that, they, they came to a place. And they found that the tomb was empty. I'm telling you right now, guys, the Lord is about to relocate you. Even as Jesus rose again from the grave, he rose again from the tomb. He, rose, he defeated the spirit of death. He defeated the curse of sin. He defeated the old Adamic nature. Come on, he received the keys of death and Hades. Come on, he has all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. All right now, amen. Not, he doesn't only have authority in heaven, he has authority on earth. Come on, somebody. And we think that the devil still has authority. The devil only has authority on earth if you give it to him. He only has authority in your life if you let him in. So, show, my gosh. So, they came to the tomb, and the tomb was empty. Someone said empty. Wow. Are you, are you in a place right now where you feel empty? You feel alone. Are you in a place right now where you feel empty? You feel alone. You feel uh, you feel like you're barren. You feel like you know uh, something's missing. All right, and they came. And I'm telling you right now, God is about to relocate you. God is repositioning you. He is moving you to a new place. He's moving you to a new era. He's moving you to a new company. He's moving you to a new job. He's moving you. Come on, Shabbat. He's moving you. Uh, 
All right, I'm going to bring this to a close here. All right? So say amen. I, I, I want to say this. Uh, all of us uh, are pilgrims. All of us are search, sojourners, sojourners. All right, we're pilgrims, we're sojourners. Yet we're sons and daughters of God. Okay, we're pilgrims and we're, we're passing through. We're sojourners and we're, we're going through. But still, you and I, we are sons and daughters of God. What does that mean? That means that we inherit and we possess. Okay, we, we, we don't just... We, we don't just work in another man's field for a season and then go to the next field. What we do is we leave it better. All right, we leave it better. We exit better. And I'm going to tell many of you right now that are in the transition. I know all of you are in the transition because God is relocating the economy of America. You're, you're not going to find it in China anymore. All right, you're not going to find it uh, in a certain way and realm and measure. God is relocating Everything in Jesus' name, all right? If you believe the same, and he's re relocating our finances, he's re it's going to be even better. It's going to be even stronger. It's going to be even higher. It's going to be even hotter. Come on, shovel. It's going to be even sweeter. It's going to be even more magnificent, more lush, more marvelous. It's going to be even more powerful. Come on, if you receive that, say amen. But even though we're sojourners and we are pilgrims and we're passing through, still we're called to be sons and daughters that possess that take dominion, okay? And right now in this season, many people are cutting off their birthright. Many people are cutting short their birthright because of fear, because of doubts, because of worry, because of uh, an idea they think that God is saying or doing. Listen, guys, I, I want to tell you right now, way too many people are leaving too early. Way too many people are leaving a season too early. Or how about this? They're leaving in a wrong way. They're leaving in a wrong spirit. And if you exit wrong, you're going to enter into the next season wrong. If you exit wrong, you're going to enter into the next season wrong. And in midst of the relocation, the relocating needs to be done by the resurrected spirit of God. Not by your fear. Not by your flesh. Not by your carnality. Not by your own desire. Come on now. It needs to be done by the pure of revelation and moving of the Holy Spirit. Remember. Come on. Because Jesus, he was no longer in the tomb because his body, his carnal flesh was gone. And he had a new body and his spirit, the resurrected spirit of God in a new body. Okay. Which is even more glorious. It would not deteriorate. It, it would not wear out. You follow me here today. So, every single one of us, in the midst of the relocation, it needs to be done in the right spirit. In the midst of the moving, in the midst of the transition, in the midst of the transference, it needs to be done in the right way and in the right spirit. Otherwise, you're going to enter into the next season in the wrong way and in the wrong spirit. Come on now, who am I preaching to today? God is relocating you. Hallelujah, from one level to the next level, from one realm of glory to the next realm of glory. And I want to tell you right now, some of you are looking in all the wrong places. Some of you are looking at all the wrong pastors. Some of you are looking at all the wrong conferences. He's relocating you. Huh? You're looking at all the wrong places. And you came to the tomb, but you saw that the tomb was empty. Why? Because that form and that revelation is no longer there. That substance is no longer there. Stop expecting that person to love you. Stop expecting that person to change. You've been, you've been trying to help this person for five, six, seven years. Stop expecting that person to change. It's, it's taking so long. Come on. It's, it's their choice. It's not just on you. It's their choice. So stop it. That form, that face, that shape has changed. Someone say amen. Wow. Are, are you following me today? And unfortunately, too many people stay looking at the tomb when Jesus is no longer there. They're staring at the tomb when Jesus is no longer there. The grace is left. The church is left. It's no longer there. My gosh. And you're looking at all the wrong places where the Holy Spirit wants to transition you and move you. He wants to relocate you. Because God is saying, it's at another place. It's at another realm. You're looking at the wrong place. 
You're expecting to receive your breakthrough. You're expecting to receive a blessing. You're you're expecting to receive your financial blessing from this job when I'm when it's empty and I, I've relocated the next move. Come on, you need to move with the cloud of glory. You need to move with the pillar of fire. Where is he moving you to? He's relocating you. Listen today. I'm, I want to tell you as I bring this to a close, and I pray over a number of you personally in Jesus' name. I want to tell you today that God is relocating you. He's no, you can no longer find Jesus in one place, in that old place, in the place of yesterday. He's relocating you from the tomb. He's risen. Come on. You cannot find him there. You cannot find your blessing there. Your breakthrough is in another place. Who am I helping today? If you receive today, show me to amen. So now I want to pray over you corporately. And then I'm going to pray over uh, at least five people and minister prophetically. And I do want to welcome you guys back tomorrow, same time. Okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow I want to talk about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And how the anointing of prospers, sets you free, sets you in line. Okay, remember, the anointing will always adjust your alignment. Okay. Your anointing will always determine your association. And that's what I want to talk about tomorrow. And on Wednesday, I want to talk about uh, how uh, the discernment of spirits. Okay, I want to talk about the discernment and the distinguishing of spirits and signs and of times. And a Thursday and Friday, it's going to be incredible. So, but I want to join you. And if you're receiving this today, say amen. All right, give me some hearts and likes. And uh, thank you for watching and for uh, sharing, okay? And... Uh, uh, but I want to pray for you right now, okay? Father, I pray for all my friends and family. That everybody who's in the middle of a rock and a hard place, or everybody who's in the middle of a transition, I pray for grace. I pray for um, wisdom. I pray that it will be done in the right way, in the right spirit. I thank you, Father, that these people, that their finances are being located in a better place. Come on, and I believe that God is actually moving some of you to a new home. God is moving some of you to a new home, to a new apartment, to a new condo, to a new house. God is moving you to a new city. God is moving you to a new ministry. Come on, this reset of the quarantine ban is giving everybody a reset button. Boom. Bing, bing. It's giving everybody a reset button, and he's giving everybody a restart. Come on, new beginnings in Jesus' name. So, Father, I pray for my people. Bless them. Keep them. Let your face shine upon them today. And I pray that as they seek your face, bam, as they seek your face, rabo shaka. Thank you, Lord. Grace for the move. He's no longer here. He's risen. You're, you're about to look into the right place. In Jesus' name. If you receive that, say amen. Wow.